Welcome. So, I'm here, the host of, of Where is Roadster, the creator of Where is Roadster. I'm gonna use this wonderful game that uh, Squad has created some time ago in order to help teach some of the basic principles of spaceflight. If you haven't tried this game out, you should really give it a shot. Um, anyone who's interested in my website will probably be interested in this game. It, it's more than just a game, it's a, a real opportunity to get a relatively good grasp on some of the basics of spaceflight in a way that's sometimes pretty hard to do. And so the point of this game is you take these Kerbals and you have them create their own little space program. You get to build and fly rockets and it uses a pretty realistic uh, physics simulation in order to make some of this work. Some of this is fiction, some of it is, is fact. I'm going to explain some of that kind of stuff as we go along. So the, the main point in playing this that I'm going to use is to educate what the principles are behind everything in the game. So I'm going to start a new game here. And we're going to try a career mode. We'll go with normal difficulty. Okay, so here we are starting in our little space center. First, we don't have a lot of, of opportunities. Um, actually, before I do that, let's take a look and see what kind of missions we can pull up. So far, this is like a simulated world that we haven't even launched a rocket and Kerbals being the brave people they are they actually try manned space flight first so just looking around at some of the different buildings here you have like a tracking station that if you have stuff that's in deep space you can go and find it but you can see that there isn't anything you can see the lovely little planet that is Kerbin here some of the cool stuff this game has some pretty great graphics and there's some opportunities to expand them beyond what we normally have to. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's our missions. We can gather scientific data from Kerbin, that's a pretty straightforward, and launch our first vessel. Uh -huh. Very easy first missions. Okay, so we'll go here to the vehicle assembly building and let's put together first rocket. So we're going to put together command pod and there's the solid rocket motor and let's try a parachute let's see here parachute and we need to collect a little bit of science so we have this mystery goo container so let's take a quick look at this um, the design of this original capsule is very similar to the Mercury capsule design. So that's that's pretty realistic. Um, we have a solid rocket motor. So as it is right now, this thing will give a huge, huge kick. Um, we're actually going to limit the thrust down because this will go too fast and will kind of go outside of the atmosphere. We have a little science container of this mystery goo that we're going to do some analysis of it to see what it, it results in and uh, see what it does behaves in different environments. That's somewhat realistic. Okay. So we're about to launch here. Now, of course, you wouldn't try something like this man, but the Kerbals, being the brave people they are, they of course decide, hey, I'm gonna do whatever. We'll just do this manned and we'll go over away. So you see little dinky launch pad. Not a lot, but meh. It's good enough. Let's go ahead and launch. You saw uh, that I'm actually tilting. If I don't release anything, I'm tilting in the wrong direction. And on top of that, I let my parachute out. Whoops. So this is a common first mistake that you can make. Um, in reality, this would mean that the parachute died and all would be over. But that's okay, we're fictional universe, we'll let this burn out and the parachute doesn't actually kill us. So, 
let's go ahead and do our mystery goo do get some science from there um, let's do a crew report okay so pretty pathetic first mission should have actually checked the staging but yeah that's okay but we'll call this done um, so cover vessel we'll call that a successful test now in reality if you're really gonna do this you would test the simulation a little bit more than this but now nah, that's okay so let's go back and try that same mission again and let's put a different pilot in the seat so you start out with four Kerbal Knots and you can increase these to however many you want as time goes. So, you know, Jebediah, he's not exactly the most patient of astronauts. He just kind of does whatever, but Valentina, she's a little bit smarter than that. So she, she launched it correctly and you'll see that it's listing somewhat in the direction of the uh, mystery goo container here. Now, in reality, this rocket would be in a huge amount of trouble because there's no thrust vectoring. All it has is a little reaction wheel control. This reaction, the, the capsule is what's actually providing the control here, not anything in the rocket motor itself. See, the rocket motor's out and we can still point from direction to direction. Right now, we're going fast enough where we're somewhat secure but um, not that secure. Eh, I'm going to wait to do chest the mystery goo until we're back on the ground, but I will do a crew report while flying. Okay. So we're going along fairly well. Uh, you'll notice there's a G-force meter here, which can kind of give you an idea. But this capsule, as is pretty realistic, it would keep going in the direction that it's moving. Even if I try to tilt it, it's it's a pretty stable configuration. So we're going to pop out the parachute. Now in reality, you have a fully deployed parachute, but here the parachutes act kind of like a droke chute configuration that will get it kind of started, and then once you get closer to the ground, then they'll go into the full parachute mode to slow it down. They do that because it would take too long to once the parachute fully deploys it takes a long time and can be kind of boring to sit here and just wait so the parachute fully deploys only a few hundred feet above the ground just a few hundred meters above the ground just to kind of give a little bit of speed to things so now we've done uh, our basic little mission um, NASA would never send a mission with just one parachute like this they would have at least two such that if one failed, they would still be able to land safely. Uh, that's what they actually have done with the Orion capsule that they're building. So you can see here we are parachuting around. You can see some mountains off in the distance. You can see Kerbal Space... Ah, oh, there we go. There's the Kerbal Space Center over there. Just below the horizon and see the ocean a little bit. Maybe we should have headed towards the ocean, but eh this can land on land just as easily. And here we go. Now we've done a couple of missions. So the way that this works is when you complete these missions you get money. You're, you're somewhat of a combination of a space agency and like a tourism type agency or a, like a SpaceX a rocket company where you're building the rockets to collect data and such. Kind of an interesting combination, but it's um, not really realistic. NASA tends to have their budget, and if something blows up, then they might have less of a budget, but they, they base things more off, off of reputation. And the companies like SpaceX, they don't care necessarily as much about the science, although they do do testing during their their various tests to see if they can push the envelope of technology a little bit and testing out things in some of these other environments can kind of help but for the purpose of the gameplay it works out really well. So we've collected a little bit of science here 
gain some experience. Um, you save money if you manage to collect more of the rocket parts. So since we had the whole rocket minus the fuel and we were relatively close to the space center, we were able to save all of the money and, and go on. Um, this game actually took place before that concept has been in place since before SpaceX landed their, their first rockets and started reusing them. Uh, but it's a kind of easy way to, to see that. So we got our research and development. Let's just go ahead and use some of the science, get some better engines, we'll get some better sensors. So you notice the thermometer probe is just basically like a, a temperature sensor. It works well enough for this, but a real temperature sensor in space wouldn't look anything like this. It just you'd have electronic readings and they're pretty small. Um, let's see here. Let's go with more, well, we don't have enough for that. Um, radial decoupler, this can be a lot of fun, so we'll get that. <clears throat> so now we can build a simulated Falcon Heavy, although we don't have nearly the, we don't have liquid fuel rockets yet. We're just using solid fuel. Uh, difference between solid fuel and liquid fuel is pretty accurately modeled in this. The the solid fuel rockets have all of their fuel in place, and they're ba they're just like the the hobby rocket motors that you get. You light them off, and you can't turn them off. A liquid fuel, you can actually turn it off, and you have a lot more control, and they're a lot better. But they're far far more complex. So in this sense, the game is quite accurate to be modeling these fairly early on that, that all you have access to is solid rockets. So I, th so I think that'll be enough for now. Um, if you guys like this, let me know and I'll keep doing this continuation of using Kerbal Space Science to explain some of the basic principles of space flight and orbital mechanics. It gets more interesting the, the further you go along, but this this first example is just really a test to see what everyone thinks out of this. Um, you know, if you like the video, then like the video, subscribe, come back more, and, and let me know what you think. I'd love to hear from you more, and let me know whatever questions you guys have about anything related to spaceflight. We'll talk to you soon, and thanks for joining me.